I guess one, there's one kind of optimism that is actually very dispiriting. The kind of optimism that ignores the magnitude of the crisis. But another kind of optimism has encompassed the magnitude of the crisis and is still optimistic. And I like to think that that's the kind of optimism that I'm speaking from. It's not that I don't understand that two-thirds of the topsoil on the planet has been nearly destroyed. It's not that I don't understand that forests are dying all over the planet. It's not that I don't understand that the oceans are dying. It's not that I don't get it about climate change. It's not that I don't understand the global financial system and its relentless exploitation of human beings and extraction of the, and destruction of the ecological basis of life. <coughs> I understand all of this. But I also understand that what's possible for our society and for us as individuals is far more than what we've been told. That our creative power, our ability to change things um, is much bigger than we, know, than we have known because the world doesn't actually work the way that we've been told. Reality doesn't function the way that we've been told. Change doesn't happen in the way that we've been told. And in fact, the way that we've been told is coming from an understanding that is also the source of all of the destruction. Essentially, that we are separate beings among other separate beings in a world that an impersonal, external universe of force and mass I'm going to flesh that out a little bit later, uh, but I'm going to enter, it, enter into that story through the realm of money, through the, through the gateway of money. Um, because this is a Schumacher lecture, and Schumacher wrote about economics. And besides, it was billed as being about money, so I'm going to do that. Um, but we could, and, and money's a good gateway because it's so central to everything that's happening in the world. You know, you, you look at, at any of these horrific <laughs> And you ask, why is it happening? Why, why is fracking coming into England now? Why are we excavating the Albertan tar sands and, and, and leveling this enormous forest? Uh, why uh, are we uh, exterminating or, or pushing out the, the indigenous people from some of their last intact areas to get rare earth minerals. You know, why is all, all this happening? And you ask why, you get one or two levels down, and the answer is because someone's making money from it. And you might ask in your personal life, why, why aren't I doing the things that really call to my heart, the things that really make me feel alive, the things that really express my care for this world? It probably, has to do with money. Money is probably not your ally in living a fulfilling life that expresses your love for this world. Probably not. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe some people um, are doing something they love and are richly rewarded for it and find that, that the um, more they orient toward money, the more they find themselves being richly rewarded. Maybe for some of you, money is an ally. But in general, what people tell me, and what I've experienced in my life, is that money is opposed to what is beautiful and sacred to me. I call the book Sacred Economics because I think that it doesn't have to be that way. I think that we could recreate money, change money, so that it's the ally of what is beautiful and sacred to us. Because what is money? Money is just an agreement in society. It's just symbols. On a physical level, money is almost nothing, you know? It's pieces of paper. It's bits in computers. It's nothing. But it has power because of the agreements that we 
that we create around, around those things, that interpret those things. And agreements can be changed. Agreements are coming from us. They're not written into the fabric of reality. So that's the premise of the book. So I think uh, I would like to actually start off with um, by inviting you to a little dialogue with each other. Um, I'm gonna, I'll just pose a little question to you, and, and, and first, maybe we'll um, take a minute to just think about it. So the question, okay, uh, I, 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 uh, I'm just thinking of this now because um, at, uh, a couple hours ago we were at a tea, a tea, what do they call it, a tea room? Um, and, and Betty's, <laughs> famous tea room. <laughs> And there was this uh, Taiwanese couple at the next table, and I used to live in Taiwan. And I always feel very warm feelings when I run into Taiwanese people. And I talked to them a little bit, and I was just you know, filled with memories and, and that, that good feeling. And I remembered uh, there was this kind of, I don't know if it was an urban legend or what, but in Taiwan it was said, many people told me this, that if you were, um, born on a bus or a taxi cab or an airplane or something like that. Um, like maybe your mother was, you know, on her way to the hospital or something, or, you know, or just went into labor, you know, and was, was away. If you were born on a conveyance, then for the rest of your life you would be allowed to ride that particular mode of transportation for free. <laughs> so, like the best would be to be born on an airplane, I guess. <laughs> So, the question I'd like to ask you is, suppose you, um, for some reason, it was decided that because you were born on this planet, that you would have a free pass to everything. So you have absolutely no money worries. You can walk into any restaurant and get served for free. Walk into a grocery store and put things in your cart for free. Go anywhere you want for free. You, just, you don't need money because everybody knows that you get, you get stuff for free, okay? So money is not an issue in your life. <coughs> what would you do with your life if you had absolutely no need to make money? Would you go to work? Would you go to the same work that you have now? Would you do different things at your work? Would you not work at all? Would you, what would you do? What would your life look like? So take a minute to think about it. And after that minute is up, I'll signal you to, to find someone to tell what you come, come up with. And then, um, if, 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 you, if there's someone next to you you do not know yet, that would be best. So you get to know somebody else who cares about the kind of things that bring people here. Um, but first, just <laughs> sit with it for a minute. Sit with that question. 